guys, Dylan, Caitlin here with Florida Fish and Fools. Well, we just got back from North Carolina doing some trout fishing. Today, we are gonna be trying to get offshore. I don't know, because the last time we were out here, this wind was pretty strong. It's pretty strong again. So we'll see, we might have to have a backup plan going here soon. We'll see, probably in the next hour by the time we clear the clear the pass but first and foremost we're gonna load the live well up with bait like we're heading offshore and see what the weather brings all right guys it was a serious grind we got it done, we got some good sized baits. Wind's starting to die down a little bit so we'll be able to get over to the pass and see if we can make the run today. We're planning on running about 40 miles but only if it's calm enough. guys so we actually made it today the forecast was definitely off but it should be getting calmer the winds definitely not very high it's just residual wave from last night so we are sitting in about 115 feet of water 35 miles west of Anna Maria and we're gonna start dropping some live baits down hoping for some some red snapper a big big patch of hard bottom here we're gonna definitely put a couple flat lines out back hoping for a tuna or something cool because I always do that when I'm out here you definitely always want to want to pop a bait out the back and just let it sit that's where I've caught all my tuna out here doing that while bottom fishing so well maybe time to get some baits down oh boy Damn. Oh, that's got me down on the bottom. Oh, man. Might be a big black grouper or something, guys. That just smoked me. I turned the video on a little late, but he took it and freaking went straight into a hole. That was a butterfly butterfly uh, pinfish that I dropped down straight to the bottom. Something just ate it and went straight in a hole. Most likely a big gag or black grouper. Let's see, I don't know if you saw what I did. I put a lot of pressure on the line and then pop it. Pop it. That fish will think that they uh, broke loose and eventually they'll swim out. And then you just give them hell. Let's see. video now but I'll turn them back on if I get them out as you can see guys just pulled up that little red grouper and now the bottom starting to get fired up hopefully uh, should be red snapper but I typically start dropping <clears throat> dropping dead bait at these spots kind of get some scent going down there get it broken up a lot of the little snapper and grouper will do that and then once those are fired up, I'll, then I'll start to drop live baits. First, we want to get the get the bottom alive down there. I was marking next to nothing when I showed up on this spot, and now we're starting to get a lot of 
a lot of stuff popping up on the finder. There we go. Yeah, it feels like a, hopefully a keeper grouper. Got a little bit of time left that we can keep these red grouper. About another month or so. And they're saying the quota's been met. So I'd definitely like to get a few of these in the box. Yeah, a nice red grouper. Not a bad fish. He's all blown up. Not a giant, but definitely a keeper. Good fish. All right, that's a start. All right, guys. Something's messing with it heavy. I just dropped a live bait down. Oh, shoot. Went early on. I dropped the live bait down. This is typically where I'll start to get the, the red snapper will start eating good. And you'll notice them up in the water column and you definitely you get to the point where you want to start fathering feathering your, your bait down and kind of stopping it where they where they first start to show or else they'll eat it on the way down every time and you'll just be fishing there with no bait on they're notorious for that eating your bait on the way down when you're trying to grouper fish there we go there's our first red snapper a little baby that's the targeted species but yeah he's he's small we're gonna look to get we're gonna look to get a much bigger fish than that but they're so pretty all laid up and what I do guys a lot of times when I'm fishing here anchored up on a spot I almost always use a knocker rig where this weight just free sliding on the leader these snapper definitely prefer it if you're gonna be stopping it up in the water column you're definitely gonna want to you know fix it to your line up here a little bit of ways um, from the bait if you if you stop it there down you know mid mid water column and your weight you've got a knocker rig and your weight's right against your bait you know you can deter some some fish from eating I'll try pinfish down there see what happens but I'm watching I'm constantly watching my bottom finder because they will start to come up pretty high and I pay attention to that to kind of dictate where I'm gonna start stopping my bait. And all I'll do is just, you know, I'll let it down for a ways, probably 70, 80 feet down, you know, and I'll just close the bail. I'll just sit there. I'll let that bait hang out. And if they're hanging in that depth, they're gonna smash that bait instantly. So I give it about 10 seconds, nothing keep dropping it I do that gradually down in the water column till I till I really find what depth they're sitting at but your depth finder will show you exactly usually what what depth they're sitting at down there Probably only 10 feet off the bottom or so with this one. There we go. Oh, that feels like a better fish. Still not a giant, but it's got a good bend in the rod. The other thing that really sets a snapper apart, a red snapper apart from a red grouper because they stay a lot in the same area as these fish will fight you all the way to the surface. This one didn't. It's another, another little grouper. Another little grouper. Alright. He's probably
probably going to be short, but not bad. Not bad for the first first stop. You see his, his swim bladder blew up. So what you do with these guys, I take my venting tool, I come right down here. You can feel some significant pressure. That's their swim bladder that's all exploded. Flake a few scales away. Pop it straight in there and you can hear that. You can hear that air release. Get a quick yeah, no, he's definitely shorter. 18 inch or so. And then they're able to swim down. If not, when they're fully inflated like that, they will not be able to make it down. just something if you're gonna come out here and fish you're gonna you're gonna catch a fair amount of smaller fish and when you do that you're gonna definitely want to have a venting tool on board to properly vent them so they at least have a decent chance of surviving I'm gonna go with a white pilchard on this one Right, so far the pinfish are getting eaten by the grouper and the one pilchard I dropped got eaten by red snapper so well, let's see what happens on this one that one one grouper rocked me up pretty good so I actually probably should have changed my leader out but I'm gonna keep letting it rock while the bite's good I've got a lot of rods rigged up ready to go too <laughs> this is just my favorite one. I typically have about seven or eight rods rigged every time I come out for a variety of different things I might encounter out here. Stuff happens really fast out here with fishing, so you gotta you gotta be prepared before you leave the dock. And really, the only way you learn is by having an experience where you you miss out on a golden opportunity because you weren't you weren't ready all right they're starting to bug this guy a little bit i can feel him twitching around all right guys this feels like another red snapper smaller one maybe a keeper this guy's only got to be 16 inches, but typically I've found pretty, pretty big ones in this spot. But yeah, it's just a little guy. Let him go. Right kind, they're just small. Come on, baby, get it. It's been a while. Nice and easy. Well, it might be on some seriously small red snapper here, guys. Go. Get it. All right, all right, all right. That's good. And we got a little red snapper. Little guy. Nice fish, baby. Yeah. Hold him for a second. Nice one. Yeah. Probably right at a keeper, but we're gonna let him go. Invented. Nice one, baby. Oh, Oh, guys. It's a nice fish and the freaking reel just broke. I think I was gonna have to hand line them. Yeah. 
hear the carnage. Yeah, that's a good fish. That's a good one. Get him in the boat. Heck yeah, baby. Nice fish. Nice fish. Alright guys, nice fish. Just broke the reel. Probably just a 22 inch red snapper. First one, first one of the season going in the box. Alright. Oh man. Frickin' oh, he all fired up. Crazy guys, it's real crazy. Dang, that is a big mahi. Oh man. guys so that was mayhem we had a nice we had a nice a uh, mahi come up oh flat lines going off to go off that guy in the cooler come on do it do it but yeah we had a nice mahi come up the same time that rod was going off it was on the bottom I threw some chummers out he tore them up but as soon as I got that fish up, I was trying to get a bait on real quick, but that mahi had already dipped out. So I was just telling Caitlin that's gonna haunt me the rest of the day. I'm probably gonna be, I'm probably gonna be looking over the side of the boat, thinking I'm seeing stuff. I got a pitch rod ready now. If anything comes up, like I was talking about earlier, you gotta always be prepared out here. Never know what's gonna come up. Go, there you go. Little red snapper, maybe. Does it feel small? Real small, baby red, baby red snapper open the bell. Look at that little guy's cute. <laughs> Good fish, baby. Snapper. Oh. There you go. That's not a bad fish. Go. Target species. Alright. Looks like a good red snapper there.
Oh. Oh. Cool guys, stopped at our snapper spot and just got a nice little scamp. Very cool. See you buddy. Alright guys, it's kinda cool. I pulled the little rod out because we've got our we've got our red snapper limit. So I stopped at a spot I usually get yellow tails. Obviously scamper generally caught in the same same bottom um, it's pretty cool first two fish on this little spot yielded scamp grouper they're so pretty love to get some bigger ones there we go there we go yeah be the right one be the right one Yeah, feels like a tuna. Feels like a tuna. Baby, I need some help. Need you get some rods out of the way. Oh, oh, this one's on, baby. Right. There might be a fish on that. Get that out of the way. I always say to keep a rod up the back. I keep two, typically. That's definitely acting like a tuna. No, it's... Oh yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Black fin. Get this one too, baby. Black fin. Come on. Come on. Oh, it's a Bonita. I was thinking it was a Blackfin. It's all right though, something got him. Something grabbed him. It's good, great bait. People bringing them in to you. Job. Good job. Oh, I thought that was a tuna. This first run was hard, deep. Alright. I will always bring those home if I catch them. They are a great bait. I actually say they don't taste too bad either, but I haven't tried one yet. Sweet. All right, first fish on the flat line today. Lost something earlier. All right, we'll get another bait out there and see what's going on. Come on, don't be a jack.